Foot Clan, today's episode, there's so much to talk about. We got news to catch you up on. It's never not working. The week nine matchups, the boom, boom kicker, the starts of the week. You don't want to miss a minute. Make sure you leave us a little comment. Tell us what you like about today's episode. Like the video and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Eagles time because I refuse to call this football. It's going to be bad. <laughs> Welcome in. <laughs> Just getting word, Brandon Cooks also declined to participate this evening. So uh, I believe Nico Collins and Brandon Cooks are almost all of the receiving yards for the Houston Texans. Both will be missing. Smash OJ Howard. I want the Philly defense so bad this week. Oh, I've got him. Yeah, you. For fantasy. You won't get him from Jason. I did try last night. Impossible. Not from my cold, dead <laughs> hands. So, uh, yeah, Thursday Night Football. So let's see here. I mean, this is a really a cold open for us. but Very cold. But we're uh, – you ready for some Chris Moore, Philip Dorsett action tonight? So, I mean, you had me at Philip Dorsett. Yeah. Yeah, we have a busy show. So, Mike, good, good news. We do not have to talk about it. Uh, never not working news and notes, fantasy forecast, starts of the week, the boom, boom kicker. I don't know your expression on your face, Jason. Oh, I was just running through what Mike said and realizing what is about to happen, which is Damian Pierce is going to touch the ball 30 times. They don't have a choice. He's going to get screens and dump offs and handoffs, no matter if they're up or down or whatever. And I'm playing against them. Yeah. But are they going to be very valuable touches? I don't not know. Likely. Not Especially likely. Not likely. When Sexy Rexy sweeps in and steals the show. Couple, I, I hope so. A couple things at the top. <laughs> Twitter, at the FF Ballers. Follow us over there. Follow Mike, at FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. And our fantasy football community, where you get access to a ton of uh, very valuable in-season tools, including the Stream Finder tool. Um, it's just it's invaluable on the decision-making process throughout the week to be able to go in Determine not just what you're doing this week, but what you're going to do in weeks to come. Uh, one of my favorite tactics in fantasy is making sure I pick up a defense a week early so I don't have to pay up big time uh, on the waiver wire for them and different things like that. You need quick and easy tools to do so. Yeah, this is also the time of year where you do start looking ahead. Like in, in draft season, we talk about, like, don't worry about the playoff schedule unless you're in best ball or something. That's too far away. You don't know anything yet. Right now, start looking at the playoff schedule. If you're if you're on your way and you're, you know, 6-2, 7-1, um, or you're just making trades and you're wanting to take a look, you can look at this, uh, the strength of schedule. You could select it for... Um, playoff weeks, you can change it to schedule-adjusted defensive ranks so that you can have really good data for who might win people championships this year. So check all that out at jointhefoot.com. You also get a bonus weekly show, some other premium perks and resources. Bonus. Thank you, Mike. Um, what else was I going to say? Jason, do you mind if I you know, share with the listenership the note I got from you yesterday. Oh, uh, please, please. I yeah, no. And that's maybe fine. you know, with the producers Was who are nice all here note? this morning. Yeah, I, you know, there were some traits. A lot in, of traits in our league of record because we are, in, you know, very passionate fantasy players, and it's almost like, um, you know, a small spark starts a fire of trades in our league. Somebody makes a deal. I made two of them yesterday uh, to just solidify my position as the best team in the league. And, uh, it looked like my division mm, that's was, it didn't work, uh, was great because, um, w m the other player who's tied with me atop the division, they're selling and yeah, they're out this year. And so it seemed like I was going to be all alone. So I, you know, I made a couple of blockbusters <laughs> to compete. You threw up the three. I can't, who's the Laker player, the GIF. Yeah, he, oh, I don't remember the player, but everyone knows the gif where he yeah. threw up the three, turned around, <laughs> turns put around. his hands up. He's signaling for the three as it rattles out. 
Oh, Nick Young was what was yeah, his Yeah, it was Nick Young. What was his nickname though? Stupid guy. No, it was he had a he had a funny nickname. But anyways, I got you know, Jason um he had his visceral reaction to me making some trades starting to compete. Swaggy P. And when yeah. I when I got back home, I had a a note from Jason and it said, "Quote, good luck this season. Glad you are back in it. Always more fun with you to compete with." Yeah. As a oh. true gentleman says. Oh man. What reverse jinx are you up to? I am just trying to be no, the, no, 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 no. I'm trying to be the best version of myself I can. I was, <laughs> I was, I was uh, a little surprised. Um, Did he send you a pizza? He hadn't sent me a pizza yet. But look, I, I, it's spirited competition. We've been in the same division for 15 uh -huh. years, uh -huh. <laughs> so we will continue to do so. Um. So I look. It's gonna be fun. If you get, I, I don't have the heart to sell ever. I realize this. Like I just, I want to go for it. It opens me up to more pain on a regular basis, but I can't not go for it. And and um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my all. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. It's everybody's favorite segment. Yeah, it's great. You, this is where we do a uh, deep dive and check out some, you know, all sorts of different storylines and statistics. And for this one, we're going to be talking about, you know, the difficulty of the sample size that is the NFL. You only get 17 games. You want to react. You don't want to overreact. And the midway point is a good way, a good place to start looking at. Have trends from the beginning locked in? Have they flipped? Uh, you know, like we've talked about, uh, you know, the 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 Bengals, their pass rate had kind of changed over the last month. The Seahawks, their improvement. We we wanted to focus on what looked like juicy matchups for your fantasy players, and maybe on the over. If you're just looking at overall points given up. They still can look like that. Which I, I just want to throw this out here as groundwork for what you're saying. The reason this is important is because every platform that you play fantasy on will show you the opponent and they will color code the opponent. Yes, they will. And that will make your brain think I've got it made in the shade or I'm in trouble. But it's over the course of the whole year that they're giving you that matchup grade so it's important to have a more narrow view of what's happening with these teams. Yeah, so for example, let's take a look at the New York Jets. And uh, Andy highlighted the Stream Finder, a tool that if you support the show, you can go check out for yourself. But it's extremely helpful for this type of a thing because we color code it as well. So you can quickly highlight the trends. At the beginning of the year, you remember those Joe Flacco games where he was throwing 40 times a week? Well, that's because the New York Jets were getting just roasted by other teams. You know, quarterbacks were putting up huge points. But over the last month, the New York Jets are third against fantasy quarterbacks, as in the third worst matchup when you adjust for schedule. Things have totally turned around, and that includes, like, a game against the Miami Dolphins, the Green Bay Packers. Like, these aren't just nobodies coming in here and, and getting shut down by the New York Jets. So you, you need to pay attention to the Jets are no longer – looking like that juicy matchup. The same for the Baltimore Ravens. When the season started, it was, oh, baby, here we go again. The Baltimore Ravens offense is going to be high-powered. Their defense is going to be just disgusting, and it's going to give us just these huge shootouts every single week for Lamar Jackson and company. Like I said, started the first three weeks. Here we go. But since week four, Baltimore – Ninth against quarterback adjusted for schedule. And theirs can be really distorted. If you remember that week two against the Miami Dolphins. Oh, that monstrous. Game was, they, they poured on so many points against the Ravens that it was going to skew their total number for a very, very long time. And you got to wrap your head around. No, that's it's simply not the case. And they just added Roquan Smith. Yes, and they've, yeah, they've improved their defense as well. Uh, so... Like pay attention. The Ravens are not if they're if, if your platform is giving you green means go against the Ravens, you may want to uh consider that for your fantasy quarterbacks. And then the the Tennessee Titans against running back. The first two weeks, the most fantasy points allowed to the running back position. 
And that was, okay, well, Saquon Barkley, okay, I get it. But then the Buffalo <laughs> Bills, and you, at that point it was, here we go. The Titans, fire up your running backs against this team. couple down weeks, well, I'm still looking at those first two weeks. But at this point, the Tennessee Titans have turned it around. Or, you know, Jonathan Taylor, the Washington running backs, Damian Pierce last week just shut them down. And they are no longer that, that situation where – uh, you have the first two weeks skewing where they are. Even if like the platform shows, well, it's, it's a middle of the pack. No, 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 no. It's been very, very bad for fantasy running backs against the Tennessee Titans. So you have to adjust. You have to always be prepared to shift your thinking of how a defense, because defenses can change their situation in just a few weeks. Once they get that fire and the momentum and or a player gets healthy and you're not, look, Knowing all of the offensive players in the NFL for fantasy football, that's that's a task unto itself. But when you mix in knowing every single defensive player, that's a whole nother beast. And I people out there, I do not blame anyone for not knowing all the defensive players, but one player can come back, change an entire situation for defense. So always be looking at the trends. How is it just was that a one time blip? Or do we now have new information about this team and I'm no longer targeting them? And if you want to know actionable advice for what you do with this information, if you understand that Tennessee is a tough run defense now, that changes what player you might be flexing this week. You might think that you need very little um, upside from a flex position right. if you think your running back is going to dominate a defense that's green. That might not be the case, so it lets you kind of fine-tune that situation like they play Kansas City this week. Yes, you know we're we're all getting a little excited here for Isaiah Pacheco. Named the starter last week was was getting the snaps. Can things start to turn? And he's running into a. It's still the Chiefs, and they're going to put up points, but it's a very difficult matchup for him on the ground. All right, uh, Jason. Anything to add to the equation here? No, just make sure you're keeping your eyes on the trends and don't get skewed by those first couple big weeks otherwise you know when you have those outlier weeks you'll think tj hawkinson's gonna be good every week because he's <laughs> right you know he had a 45 point single week yeah and i'll say it works in reverse by the way difficult looking matchups might not be as difficult later in the season so when you see the red go look in the short term see if it's a better matchup than you think it's also a good way to persuade people on certain trades ah they got a hard matchup this week you know there are some things you can do there so yes. a reminder Get up to 100% dandruff protection that is never not working with head and shoulders. Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Guys, I'm dying right now because uh, Brandon Cooks has been reported, at least by Ed Werder and a retweet by Adam Schefter. And Rappaport. And Rappaport. That he's not playing tonight. But I'm sitting here on the sleeper platform <laughs> four minutes before waiver goes through, and I need him out. I need him marked out, and I don't have him I think, marked out. I think Owl is correct that perhaps you do not have the official out from the team. No. <laughs> hey, it was uh, just saying. He's, no, he's I know the, the rules only matter when they apply to others. I assume that the official out will be coming in about five minutes. I was yeah. going to say, I'm going to get the OUT right after waivers process. Whatever, man. But no Brandon Cooks. Not that you really wanted to play him against Philly Correct. with all of this tumult. So it is clarity for you early in the day. And you can make other plans or move him onto IR or whatever. Because he's got a, quote, wrist problem, guys. I can't believe they didn't <laughs> trade him. Yeah. I mean, I uh, I get yeah, it. I don't know what to do here because he signs a two-year extension with them this past offseason to make, what, $12 million a year or something like that? Uh, it's a lot of money. Sure. And then it's like, I'm supposed to feel bad that he didn't get traded at the deadline from the team he just signed a two-year deal for. I don't what? know behind the scenes, but well, I'm sure why when, sign the deal? When you're signing the deal, they are also pumping you up. They're pumping you up and they're pumping up the team. These are the changes that we're making. This is the culture shift. We're going to be a winning franchise next year. And if he believes that, it, look, I, I mean, I've got, <laughs> what is it? I've got ocean front property in Nebraska to sell you or yeah, something. I, I mean, that Houston wasn't going to turn it around this year. 
Well, it seems like there's, uh, again, stuff behind the scenes we don't know from the last couple of weeks. The fact that he's been missing practices, less involved in, in the game plan. It seems like there was discussion about him leaving to a winner, and that didn't happen. And so he's, he's not happy. very, very upset to the point of not practicing and uh, apparently hurting his own wrist. <laughs> well, and I don't even know the implications for his pay if you are unhappy. He'll, like He'll miss a game check. And then you think he'll come right back? I don't know. Um, well, you know, he did say, don't take a man's kindness for granted covered for the lies for too long. Those days are done. Cross the line with playing with my career bow and arrow emoji. <laughs> what, what are you doing? This is why we need Shots Twitter fired. in our lives. Yeah. What are you doing? All right. I, I can't stay with Brandon cooks. We've got too much to cover. Jonathan Taylor did not practice on Wednesday. Tweaked the same ankle that held him out two games earlier in the year. Uh, Frank Reich said the team will weigh his progress as the week progresses. Um, so they signed Jordan Wilkins off the practice squad. They brought in a bunch of running backs to try out for that, and there was some reporting that this is going to be expected over the next couple of weeks is that he's probably not going to be practicing much. We don't know if he's going to play. Yeah, I think there's I a good chance – that he misses this week. Yeah, and I I agree there's a chance for that to happen, but working out players for the practice squad, calling one up from the practice squad, that's going to be part and parcel with the Naeem Hines mood too, though, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, they I, did I, get Zach Moss back, so, I mean, it was, it was a one-for-one one players. That's true. That's true. Um, it's it's Yeah, be prepared that Johnny Taylor's going to miss. And if that's the case, Deion Jackson has been excellent for fantasy purposes in his one start without Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, maybe. It was so many receptions. No, that, that was in the past. I can say that. Oh, yes. Yes. And accurate. He was the number two fantasy running back in his one start. That's very, all I'm going to say. Very accurate. Do you have the receptions in front of you? A lot. I think it was, it was 10. 10 yeah. 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 From Matt Ryan. Yeah. Different quarterback, different situation, and a terrible You're matchup. You're saying he could hit 15 the, or 20? Against the Patriots. Um, look, people need running backs. I, I'm looking um, across yes. the table at somebody that. Uh, oh, no, I yeah, I that, wish I had Deion on, Jackson to thinking play. about Justice Hill as an option this week. So, what are you doing? What are you going to do at running back? Don't you worry about it. Okay, <laughs> all right. I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Keenan Allen hamstring got worse during the bye week. That's, uh, I mean, the frustration is immense right now because he's he missed a lot of time and then couldn't get back healthy. So he's not gonna. Play. The way he has spoken about this new reaggravation is that he felt really, really good in week seven, but he wasn't a hundred percent. And now he is not going to come back until he is one hundred percent. Now it took him over a month to get to really, really good, but not a hundred percent going into week seven. So I expect he's going to miss several weeks. I mean, this but is it's TBD. It's just a matter of how long it takes a body to heal. Someone in our MVP show in the offseason brought up Josh Palmer as a potential league winner. Josh Palmer is alone. I mean, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, they are both going to miss time. That was Josh Norris, I believe. That yes, brought that it was. Up. And I believe our view of that MVP pick was like, somebody's got to go down for Josh Palmer to, to step up and do it. Both of their main targets are down. Austin Eckler is going to be, you know, the offense. So Palmer, he did clear the concussion protocol. He will be playing, we believe. And uh, DeAndre Carter is a dart throw. I mean, you need to sure. at least cast your eye in his direction. And Gerald Everett will be yeah. more and more involved in yeah. the tight end position. Absolutely. Cardinals, James Conner, limited on Wednesday. Darrell Williams placed on IR. They are back to the rotation of potentially Eno with Conner, Eno with Ingram. You know, this is... That's Keontae Ingram. That's yes. right. And so James Conner, I mean, I... It's hard to hard to say he's going to be out there and hard to say what to do with him even if he is. Difficult to start a guy who's been missing this long and every single week he's a game time decision and not able to go when he comes back very um hard for me to imagine putting him into my starting lineup. Obviously it was six bye weeks, you might have to. There's there's worse options starting, uh but if you can let James Conner come back to his first game on your bench, that would be my advice. Cooper Cup did not practice on Wednesday. So this is Rams updates here. Cam Akers plans to return to the team and practice on Thursday. Man, this that situation is so funky. It is. And then 
on top of all the question marks, you know, they signed Malcolm Brown. They have Daryl Henderson. They have Cam Akers maybe coming back. Don't forget about a Rivers runs through it. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie Rivers, who's the uh, darling of some fab waiver wires for some reason this week. But Kyron Williams, looks like he may be elevated to the active roster. Rams feel pretty good about it, according to the Athletics' uh, Jordan uh, Rodrique. Yeah, uh, Kyron was a good running back in college that all three of us really liked his film. He ran slow at the combine and weighed in. Very slow. Yeah, very, very slow. Um, Backwards. And, and and he didn't weigh in as a heavy guy. So sometimes, you know, the slow backs that are bigger bodied, whatever, you forgive it. When you're a smaller, slower He's guy. still running the 40. Yeah. It is yeah. rare yeah. to succeed. So he fell to the fifth round, uh, fell in fantasy dress, but he was a player that looked great on film, we all liked, and now has an opportunity to come in and say, well, you, everyone else sucks. Let, let me have the first dibs. But it is a crowded backfield with a bad offensive line. So I'm not – my uh, he's a good stash, someone to be aware of, but I don't anticipate he comes through, you know, gigantic for fantasy. Any other news breaking this morning? Not yet. Nothing? You guys have anything else you need to – oh, Cordero Patterson returned to practice. Well, he feels yeah. about ninety percent. Yeah, we we had, I thought we had mentioned him. He was designated to return, but we did get the quote that him saying he was ninety percent. We still don't know if he will play this weekend. All right, All please right. play. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll be into the forecast. All right, it is time to dig in. Week nine, here we come. Let's break it down. Fantasy forecast. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Deucers. I remember the drop this time. Good work, host of this podcast. <laughs> you guys doing well today? Doing great. We've got cat how's, how's the alley? In. How's what's the what's the smell factor in that alley tonight? Yeah. How are you guys doing? The smell factor. Yeah, the, how bad does it smell yeah, in is, your alley? Uh, is it uh, pee pee it, it or poo poo? It always smells great. You guys back do here. go to the bathroom in your seats, right? <laughs> it's it's the alley, of course. And no they're comment. All, they're all wearing hats too, so it must be very bright in the alley. Yeah, uh, we, when you don't have when you don't have hair, <laughs> you, uh, Al Borland putting on the sunglasses. Good work, everybody. Okay, well, good good talk. Good yeah. talk. See you later. Uh, goodbye. Uh, the Los <laughs> Angeles Chargers. <laughs> At four and three, take on the four and four Atlanta Falcons, division leaders, champions of Kyle's heart. I love these two teams. These are my two favorite teams in the league, but one is in first place. Four and four. When does it turn to where you just want them to run away with it, Kyle? The the Falcons. It, it has to be now. Because you've wanted the number one pick, but now it's like, at this point, do you just want the division? Oh, I love Arthur Smith now. Right but, now, he's fine. Yeah, I mean, aren't you looking forward to get getting blown out at home in a playoff game? <laughs> Because right now they would be hosting oh, a playoff that's, game. That's good stuff. <laughs> All right. These are um, two teams with two different offensive strategies. I believe uh, Justin Herbert has 50-plus passes in two consecutive weeks. Marcus Mariota has yet to hit 50 attempts on the season. Probably. I don't know. Uh, eh, that's probably not true, yes, but not. it's close. The The Chargers' fifth and pass rate over expectation. Arthur's plan is to win the division, I oh. guess. So you can't really argue with it. I mean, you can. We yeah. do all the time. Yes. Arthur with his stupid face on the sideline <laughs> calling run plays all the time. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm just reciting what happens in the studio on Sunday morning. But, you know, Patterson is coming back. He is a weapon for this offense. Might be coming Might be. back. We don't know for sure Soon. if he will play. Yes, he's he's coming back. But for this matchup, uh, still a little bit TBD. And that makes a big difference because people have been playing Tyler Algier. People uh, that I know close to me. Uh, it, it may have to happen. Might have to play Caleb Huntley. And so whether or not Cordero Patterson uh, is back makes a big difference. And this is a really good matchup for running backs. So if Cordero Patterson is back and active, I think you start him. I know it's hard uh, first week back, but because the matchup is so juicy and they've waited enough time, I, I think you're going to want to put Cordero in your yes, lineup. Yes, I would. The question is, if Cordero is in your lineup, are you willing to uh, start Tyler Algier? He would be the next guy. I 
behind Cordero. I am okay with it, mostly because of the matchup. The The, the Chargers are just atrocious. Uh, they're 30th against fantasy running backs, allowing a ton of points to the position. And with it being Patterson's first game back, and Tyler Algier it's, has been – it's so he's, hard because he's served. He's he's done what Arthur wanted him to do. Hunt, Huntley's been a better runner to my eyeballs, and Algier's been a better pass catcher. So it's just confusing. Like it's, Algier last didn't he have like thirty yards rushing last game? I'm like he, yeah, fifteen he was, carries. He was fourteen for thirty nine. It and Huntley had like ninety one yards rushing. It's it feels very much like a like a like a Zeke and Pollard situation between those two guys. Huntley looks like he has far more juice, but there, there's a reason that they're giving Tyler Algier a bunch of work. Like it, the, the, Arthur's watching the game and seeing that Huntley is the one getting these huge, uh, or not huge, but you know the, the bigger carries compared to Algier. But I think that Algier wearing the off the the defense down that's part of the plan for them, even though it's highly inefficient. So after I did the fantasy football community a solid by benching Kyle Pitts last week, he is now the highest he's been ranked in our rankings at tight end since week one. Kyle Pitts coming off a good performance, not just mediocre, a good fantasy performance up around uh, just under 17 points, I believe. The hope being that the Chargers will put up points. The Falcons' defense is still bad, 31st against quarterbacks, 32nd against wide receivers, and you're hoping that you get a more of a uh, back and forth like we had with the Panthers, so that way they have to use Pitts. Now, uh, it's possible. I, I'm worried about the Chargers offense because Justin Herbert thus far this year, it's not been, you know, you, you look at the beginning of the year and you say, oh, he's old fashioned Justin Herbert. Well, he played the Raiders and we know what the Raiders are now. And that's when he was the, uh, the QB five. Since then, he has not been, you know, his highest finish is QB eight against Seattle in garbage time. He hasn't thrown three touchdowns since week two. Taking away Mike Williams doesn't help you. And the Falcons slowing the game down doesn't help you. So I am a little bit worried. I don't blame you at all for being hesitant on Herbert. Her Herbert obviously is talented enough himself that you're going to start him in a lot of situations, but there are plenty of other players. You know, if you want to uh, – Tua, you, you personally have uh, Tua and Herbert on the same team. That's an easy Tua for me. I have Tua in my lineup in my lineup right now. Yeah, I mean, most people probably don't have two high level guys, and it would be difficult to take a good um, streaming matchup like Kirk Cousins has a really good matchup this week. Would you start Kirk Cousins over Herbert? No, I don't think I uh, could either. Probably wouldn't. Probably wouldn't. I would. I'm trying to trust the fifty plus pass attempts. And that that will end up in a better, you know, touchdown percentage than we've seen. Just hard without good weapons. Yeah, A.J. Terrell, one of the only good defensive weapons for the Falcons. The last report we had, he didn't practice on Wednesday. Today's has not come out yet that I have seen trending towards not playing this week with a hamstring issue. So you're missing some weapons, but it is a pretty nice matchup. The Falcons are second worst adjusted for schedule against quarterback for fantasy points given up. What is uh, what are some other potential values in this game? You're still keeping Drake London on your bench, I assume, and Correct. then um, not willing to go the DeAndre Carter route. I, I don't know. I think I, I think DeAndre Carter is in flex consideration. I mean, Josh Palmer and DeAndre Carter project to be the wide receiver one and the wide receiver two in a plus matchup with Justin Herbert. Uh, both Josh Palmer and DeAndre Carter have. Had big games for fantasy before. So if you're looking for someone from the waiver wire to go out there and hopefully get you 10 points or the opportunity for a a, a surprisingly big game, I think DeAndre Carter's in play for that. He, I am disappointed in his DraftKings price because he didn't. he's not making my lineup because he's too expensive. He's 4,300 on DraftKings, and I'm like, oh, I mean, man. He's, he's had so much opportunity this year. I know it's, it, it's a little different because Mike Williams is out-out, but – Multiple games of 70-plus percent of the snaps. Last week, 94 percent of the snaps. Even saw seven targets and just – he's not – He's a wee lad. He's not uh, He's not exciting for me. So Palmer or Rondale Moore, Mike? Oh, man. Jason, I think you'd say Palmer. I would. Mm. I think both are good plays. Yeah, okay. both are good plays. Rondale Moore is just much safer. Josh Palmer or Romeo Dobbs? 
Josh Palmer. Yeah, I'll go. Palmer for me it's too. probably Palmer unless Lazard is out, which we, he practiced. Can we yesterday. talk about a game I'm very, very excited about? Yes, let's go. Is that all right? The Miami Dolphins, five and three, taking on the three and five oh. resurgent Chicago Bears. Palindrome. Palindrome game. Yeah. I got it first. <laughs> uh, that's a point for Jason. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Dolphins minus five. The over under is forty five and a half. Okay, Miami's offense looks awesome with Tua yeah. under center. Um, you have Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill. You can take deep shots all the time and get away with it. Gasicki is getting involved. Mostert now. Jeff Wilson joins the Dolphins offense. Um, you know the Bears schedule adjusted against wide receivers. They've actually been pretty stout. They haven't faced Jalen Waddle. They haven't faced Tyreek Hill. That's a tough matchup for anybody. And they no longer have Roquan Smith, so that will affect you Pass know, their, rush the, and... exactly. Their entire defense will be affected by that. I would expect that the Bears defense takes a step backwards in a tough matchup and gives up a ton of points. I am all in on the Miami side of the ball. Not quite as in on Mike Gesicki as I have been. You know, I, I think the last yeah. two weeks looked good for him, and I started him last week. Um, I haven't checked our waivers. Let's see. I'm, yeah, you let him go. I did. You let, let him, him go, okay. and you went. You pivoted to Robert Tunyon. Yes. So in that heads up matchup, you'd go the the Tunyon route this week with what's going on at tight end. Uh, you know, I, I, he, he's a valuable piece of this offense, and what you're hoping for is this game to hit the over. That Justin Fields continues to um, exploit defenses with his legs, moving the ball down the field. Herbert and Montgomery are a tandem that gets the ball moving, and and then you, you've seen it. Like, the Dolphins' defense schedule adjusted. They're awful against quarterbacks, running backs, and tight end. They're not good. And adding Bradley Chubb this week is not going to make them good overnight. Games in Chicago. I hope this game we can get get a bit of the Miami Dolphins style shootout we've been getting lately. Like last week, Dolphins went down fourteen to nothing against Detroit right out of the gate. It sets you up for so much success. I hope that happens here. Yeah, and I I think that this is a team you can run on, and so that's the Bears' specialty between Fields, Montgomery, and Herbert all running the ball very well. They should be able to come down and score on the Dolphins. So the I I would I would bet the over on this um and i think i would be willing to put darnell mooney out there you know if, if you're talking about like yeah we're saying oh you could play deandre carter in a pinch darnell oh. mooney is definitely a much better option he's been good lately i am not worried at all week one about chase claypool and i am not in any way shape or form starting chase claypool the first week on a low passing volume offense where you don't even know his involvement over the last five weeks darnell mooney averaging four for 67 so not not breaking the doors down, but that's that's usable. It's a good baseline. Let yeah. me let me get to the meat of uh, this matchup in terms of decision making for fantasy players. There are people out there that have David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert. Oh man, Herbert was the scorer last week. The week before, it was Monty. It right? was Monty, yeah. right? And the just for what it's worth, we had been tracking the Monty snap percentage. Monty snap percentage when he finished as the running back 22 last week was 56%. He had a touchdown. He followed it up with 70% again. He was back into his normal range. He was 70% of the snaps, 18 opportunities. Those went up. He just didn't get into the end zone. Khalil Herbert did. If you're facing that heads-up decision, how does a fantasy manager make the right call? It's really easy. It's to, it's David Montgomery. Uh, to, to, to me, it is not close. I realize that Herbert can outscore David Montgomery. But if you're looking about last week, and you, they have packages where they bring Khalil Herbert in and they know they're running the ball, but I want the guy that's on the field. Khalil Herbert last week, I mean, you're talking – 28% of snaps to 70% of snaps. A higher this is running, not, but a higher running back attempt share. Well, sure. But that's, when when they were when he's in because he's not a good pass blocker, you know like he's getting the ball and that's fine. But that split 70% of snaps versus 28% of snaps. I, okay. And, and even Herbert if he's the most talented player, I'm going David. He doesn't Montgomery. catch passes. He had none last week, 3 for David Montgomery. Montgomery had the fumble, otherwise he probably sneaks into the top 36 even in that week. Yeah, uh, you, I think you could start both, but it's definitely man, I wish Montgomery there was, first. I wish there was better clarity as to what's going to happen the rest of the way. Does anybody have a crystal ball? <laughs> crystal ball handy. Uh, and having said all that, if between the two of them this particular week, I would go 
with David Montgomery. I don't think it's an easy decision, but they if they are still going hot hand and David Montgomery is getting the start, I think there's a good chance that David Montgomery gets a hot hand early due to the Miami rushing defense, which, again, improved, but TBD. Claypool? Wait and see until oh yeah to I mean, see how he's yeah, utilized. Yeah, if you want to stash him, that's fine. But Claypool, it's not like a priority. A fresh Claypool start or DeAndre Carter? Anyone else? Yeah, I will go DeAndre Carter. You're worried about just how often he's even on the field? Yeah, he he might be on the field for ten total snaps, and they it's it, pretty beyond Mooney. It's pretty wild what their rotation is right now. Because if you think about the names that we've said out loud for the for the Chicago Bears. You have a rotation, a five wide receiver rotation of like Harry, Pettis, Valus Jones, Equinemius St. Brown. Brown, and I think there's one other one. I mean, they just move them in and out. And then there's Cole Komet, who's on the field for every freaking snap. <laughs> and never used. And never getting targets. The uh, the Carolina Panthers what are, are, are two and six, Mike. They're two and six, and they're taking on the um, – it's a battle of the – Oh, it's a cat battle. It's a cat battle. The Cincinnati – Yeah. Cincinnati Bengals are four and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cincinnati at home, minus seven and a half. The over under is just forty two and a half points. That gives PJ Walker and the Carolina Panthers just seventeen points in this road matchup. Now, um I think the actual cats in this equation probably if they were to fight, it's about the same as this football game. Bengal Tigers up in the four forty. The five seventy pound range. Okay. Black Panthers about one hundred and fifty pounds. Well, mm. that, I think you're talking about the Black Panther. Uh, or are we talking about an, just I, a regular I, Panther? I, I, was that, were you really giving me the the no. weight of a superhero? No, I was giving you the actual. But okay. But, but, wait, a we, Panther's only one hundred fifty pounds. Yeah. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, that, that is pretty embarrassing for the get Black bigger Panther, Panther. community. Get, get in the gym. I mean, what is this? The Pink Panther? Come <laughs> Seriously. on! Um, oh my gosh! Yeah, stealing gyms. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, so we expecting any surprises in this game? The the we got one last time. The Bengals played football. Let's put it that way. Well, and and here's the deal with the Bengals, and one thing that's worth bringing up is that the. The Bengals season has gone as their offensive line has gone. And yes. their offensive line, you you had hoped, oh, they're figuring things out. They're getting it better. But I think a lot of that is some of the schedule that they were playing where they didn't face a good pass rush. You know, two weeks ago against Atlanta, Atlanta doesn't really have a pass rush to speak of. And so they're, they're looking good. And everything is being blamed on Jamar Chase. Everything is like, oh, well, Jamar Chase That's wasn't nonsense. gone, and so now they – can't, run, they the can't ball, run the ball and they can't uh throw the ball and they can't protect Joe Burrow it's just a matter of are they facing a good pass rush with this for some reason terrible offensive line and they are facing a decent pass rush Carolina uh, you know they they don't have a lot of strengths but I do think that they can they can press pressure uh the quarterback so I don't I don't love smashing the Bengals even though they're at home off a loss and like you in a in a matchup where they're big uh, seven and a half point favorites. I'm not like excited about the offense. I'm not trying to jam these guys in my DraftKings lineups and that type. What of about Tyler aspect. Boyd? Yeah, I mean, Tyler Boyd's just a solid start. I think for the, but even saying all that for redraft, like Mixon, you're playing T. Higgins. Absolutely, you're uh -huh. playing Tyler Boyd. You're playing. Yes, I'm playing him. Hayden Hurst, you should probably play. And Hayden Hurst, if if there is definitely situations where he's in for you, so. Uh, I'd maybe, rather maybe you're, maybe you're not loving the matchup, but everybody's in. And then on the other side, Deontay Foreman got a Veterans Day on Wednesday. Chuba Hubbard returned to practice. He he did return to practice, but Chuba said he believes he's still in kind of the rehab portion of his injury. So that is very TBD uh, if he's going to make the field on Sunday. Yeah, I think on the Panther side of the ball, you, you're I don't know how anybody would bench Deontay Foreman after no. last week, so he's in. And DJ Moore, since the trades of Christian McCaffrey and Robbie Anderson, has been really, really good. He's got to be in the lineup. Do you think that it's possible for DJ Moore? Like, would would the game allow him to hit the he's on fire from NBA Jam? I mean, yeah. one more week of DJ Moore, and I feel like that might be the first time in his career he could hit on fire. I well, think it is very possible. Yeah. Three straight weeks of DJ Moore, we've never seen it. So Very exciting. It's, it's, it's tough. I think you, you have to play him. What if you have Palmer? 
I would play DJ Moore. Yeah, I I, I would play DJ Moore. Uh, DJ Moore also was on fire weeks two through four last year. Just checked. Yeah? Yeah. What was his fantasy finishes in there? 12, 11, and three. Oh, that's, three that's back on, to that back was, to that back. That was boom shock. And then what happened after that, though? Let's not worry about that. <laughs> Uh, the next week was wide receiver 58. Okay. Uh, did not so reach 50 he, yards. So he did the, you get on fire, you're so pumped, and then you you miss your goaltending swipe, and immediately your fire is gone. Exactly. Yes. That's, the, that's exactly that the, what happened. That is the worst. Green Bay <laughs> Green Bay Packers, 3-5, and five, taking on the 1-6 and six Detroit Lions. Mm. The yeah. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Packers minus 3.5. <laughs> How are those uh, Coach of the Year bets doing, everybody? <laughs> For Dave Campbell. <laughs> well, look, here, here's the interesting thing about this game. The Packers are only three and a half point favorites. Detroit, this game is 49.5. That's the over under that gives Detroit 23 points. The Packers 26 and a half. Not the kind of line you would expect for the Packers going into Detroit. It's not. I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted. Oh, go for it, man. And I, I, I see it. Al Borland, the Do Packer it. fan over there, and he is just, he knows that this is a this could really happen. It could happen, but the situation the is... The Packers have lost four in a row. The Packers' defense, though, is pretty good. Uh, and the Detroit Lions' defense is not... Yeah, I'm not betting on the Lions. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I understand the three and a half. I under, and then I, I totally get being like, man, the Packers have been struggling. Lions in that shootout last week. But no, I I would take the Packers to win this game, and Aaron Rodgers. Very, he, I think he's interesting for fantasy purposes this week, especially if Alan Lazard plays. If if Lazard is out, which he practiced on Wednesday, if Lazard is out, maybe you don't want to go in with Aaron Rodgers. But other than that, I mean, this is this is an exciting matchup where I'm getting, you know, most of my Packers in. Yeah, this is a perfect matchup. You, you've you got Detroit at home in a dome with um, Amon Ra, St. Brown, active and healthy. No Hawkinson. And so in that situation where you're not facing you know a top defense, you're not on the road, and you have your main target, the Detroit Lions offense has been able to put up points. I expect them to be able to put up points on the Packers. And they cannot stop anybody from doing anything. So the if you want to salve... Speaking of the... Detroit Lions defense. Correct. If you want a salve for the struggling Packers offense, it is here. Um, and if it's not, oh boy, Packers. Sure. That's uh, that's a fair thing to say. Yeah, but. absolutely. If they can't score on the Lions, shame bell. <laughs> uh, this, this is uh, the type of game where, in a pinch, you can even start A.J. Dillon, who has been <laughs> unstartable. I mean, if he gets double-digit carries against this Lions team in a game with almost a 50-point over-under... You know, you're talking about starting Caleb Huntley. Sure, uh, the, there are I agree. situations where you know it you, it it hasn't been a usable asset. In a pinch, you can use AJ Dillon. Obviously, Aaron Jones, who's uh, had a great showing recently, he's a smash start. Dillon was up in double digit carries last yep. week. Caught a pass. Was 5.4 a carry against Buffalo's defense. I like that uh, sneaky start at running back when you you have a six team bye week situation. That is. Um, very astute. Mr. It sounded Morris. like there were 16 teams on by there. That would be brutal. If that were the case, I would play A.J. Dillon. Yes. Um, at, sorting through the wide receivers. Can you take a dart throw in a game like this, a matchup like this, on somebody like Sammy Watkins? No. No. But you can take a dart throw on Romeo Dobbs. I know that the it's been hard to predict which games he's going to get a touchdown, which games he's going to straight up goose and drop everything in my lineup. Um which was two weeks ago, but the targets have been there. You look back from week three, eight targets, eight targets, five, nine, four. That was the goose. And then seven last week where he was four for 62 and a touchdown. Uh, in this matchup, I know I have personally been frustrated with Dobbs. I know Aaron Rodgers has been frustrated with Dobbs, but he seems like a fine flex option this week. Oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, Sammy Watkins played 79% of snaps. My biggest concern is if Lazard comes back, where do the snaps go yeah, a little bit? It's, um, it's, it's fair. It's, 
it'd be better for the Packers to keep Dobbs out there over Watkins. I'm just not positive they're going to do that. I mean, he was 80% of snaps got one target last week, Sammy Watkins. Oh, so, I, I know. I know. I'm, I'm not. So I can't imagine that they're going to play Watkins just straight up ahead of Dobbs as my point. He's, he's not the one earning targets for this offense. All right. You go, you go with your Dobbs. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit frightening for me. Amon Ra, play him. Always. Yep. Jamal Williams. Seems like you can play him as well. It won't be pretty, but it will be frequent. Yeah, especially if DeAndre Swift misses, which he missed practice yesterday, if you did not hear that, which that's, I mean, the, trending in a very poor direction when you have the excitement of last week, full practice throughout the entire week. The game rolls out, and you're like, where's DeAndre Swift? And... He caught a touchdown. He had, I think, five receptions or, show, uh, re receptions or so, got five attempts, but then wasn't good with them. And then after the game, Dan Campbell saying, I think I gave Swift one too many carries. You're like, you, and he said he's not is? back. <laughs> yeah, so all of that, then to go into Wednesday and he's not practicing, it is highly concerning. Yeah, and four of the seven games that uh, the Lions have played, Jamal Williams has been a top 15 running back. I think he's someone that should be started until proven otherwise. The Colts are 3-4-1. and one. They're traveling to Foxborough to take on the New England pa Patriots, who are 4-4. Four and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Patriots minus 5.5. The over-under is gross. It's 40 points. Yeah, yeah. But that gives New England about 23 of those. That's fine. Uh, Ramondre has been a dominant force. The last three weeks, he has 19 receptions. He's the RB6 since week three. And um, it really feels like, you know, the team is relying on him. You know, last week when you watched this offense, it was like Ramondre and Jacoby Myers was the entire moving of the football. So both of those players at home, even though the Colts defense is pretty formidable against both running back and wide receiver. I don't see how that convinces you to sit either of those players. No, you can't sit Ramondre, who's been basically a top five running back since week three, and you can't sit Jacoby Myers, who's just the clear number one target in any kind of PPR setting. Those two guys are in the lineup. I don't know that I go anywhere else. I don't have the confidence to start Damian Harris. He I would rather start. Harris missed practice on Wednesday because of a, uh, illness. Right. Um, and I don't think we have the Thursday update on that. I would start an A.J. Dillon over a Damian Harris. Basically, they're both the backups, but one's got a much better matchup. And A.J. Dillon over Damian Harris. Um, and I, I can't trust whether, uh, you know, Tyquan Thornton, who's had, you know, his touchdown games or. Hunter Henry like you just don't know who the secondary target's going to be there so the the Patriots side of the ball is really really easy it's, it's yeah Ramondre yeah. and Jacoby I, and that's it and the Colts defense I mean I know it's on the road here but they have been vastly improving they just got Shaq Leonard back you know they gave up that'll help they gave up nine points to Denver they gave up 19 to or I'm sorry they gave up yeah 19 to Tennessee they gave up 17 to Washington last week and it was 10 until the last play of the game pretty much they've just been playing a lot better so I would not be surprised that this game was a uh, a pretty boring affair for fantasy especially if Jonathan Taylor's not out there uh, you know Sam Ellinger trying to throw the ball to Michael Pittman I it's just gonna be sad yep it is gonna be sad I I do believe that you can uh, you could start uh Pittman last week it was nice to see that he was the number one target in the offense nine targets he was 7 for 53. You would have a very different viewpoint of Pittman if one of two things were different. He got the designed play near the goal line for him to get a touchdown. It was called a touchdown on the field on review. It was like on the one-inch line. Didn't break the plane. If he gets that touchdown, you're looking at he had nine targets, you know, seven receptions, a touchdown, had a great week. And then at the end of the game on the drive back, uh, he dropped a 30 or 40 yard ball that was put right in his hands. Um, and so he gets that and you're like, Oh, eight for 90. We're okay. Now this matchup isn't great, but I am, I, I do not think that Pittman is someone that I'm terrified of right now. Yeah. I mean that they were, they were in desperation mode. I want to see him get the ball down the field regularly, not with whatever under a minute to go. That would be nice. Cause Pittman is, he has that ability and they just, they're using him 
so close to the line of scrimmage. They're throwing the ball deep to Alec Pierce. Uh, this offense is going to be a problem. Who's the? What's the record for the Titans right now? Uh, I believe they're five and two. Wow, he's a good coach. Yeah, Vrabel. Vrabel gets it done. He he gets his guys to play hard and violent. Buffalo six and one taking on the five and three New York Jets divisional matchup in New York. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Bills minus twelve. The over under is forty seven. I would um, I pay a lot of cold hard cash to have the Buffalo defense <laughs> in this game against Zach Wilson, the circus clown that is. I mean, the oh, music. No. I, look, oh, is he the no. worst quarterback in the league? Oh, no. No, he's not the worst quarterback in the league because he he can ping pong between a, a you know making a play and not making a play. The worst quarterbacks can't make plays, and then they have a bad play. You know, like Zach Wilson, he's got some weapons. He got it into the end zone last week, and he was okay for fantasy, but he's the riskiest quarterback in the league. He holds the ball longer than anybody in the league. Buffalo will take advantage of all of his mistakes. Zach Wilson's goal in life is to roll backwards 17 yards to the right side of the it's field favorite. and chuck it back across his body or to the opponent. Yeah, and the circus music plays every time that he starts rolling to the right. Da, 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 right. Da, da, da. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, uh, that's I, the huddle music. Yeah, that's, that's when he's in the huddle. <laughs> is all right, guys, listen. Zach Wilson's like, oh, that's my jam. Um, I, I think they would be a better team with Davis Mills, with P.J. Walker. Um, oh, man. Certainly with Joe Flacco. Well, Flacco uh, got demoted to the third string last week and was very upset and confused by that, but he is not coming in anytime soon. This is going to be a brutal matchup. Now, what I'd like to look at for the Jets moving forward is if they're ineffective in the run game, which they were last week without Brees Hall, and they probably will be some degrees of ineffective remainder of season remainder of season. Like James Robinson is not going to fix it because he's not Brees Hall. My curiosity is, will they do what they tried to do last week, which was look, Zach Wilson threw for 355 yards. He had 41 pass attempts. They're going to get boat raced by the Buffalo offense. And you saw Garrett Wilson proportionally. Ha I mean, not proportionally. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cor with game. correlation, he had yeah. the best game of his year, his first over 100 yard game. Are they going to do more running through the air type of style to kind of make up for having no Brees Hall and they, you know, with Garrett Wilson and company? Well, they're going to have to because I would imagine halfway through the second quarter, you're going to be down multiple scores. Uh, it, it, this is the Buffalo Bills are the best offense in the league, and I think they might be the best defense in the league. You're not going to be able to have a game plan that they instituted with Zach Wilson when they were winning games with Brees Hall, which is run and play great defense. Like we brought up on the Never Not Working, uh, the Jets' defense is legit. But a legit, the best defense in the league is not going to just close down the Buffalo Bills, not mm -hmm. with uh, Josh Allen and company there. So you're going to get scored on. Zach Wilson will drop back to pass. And I think Garrett Wilson's a fine play. Uh, Elijah Moore should be dropped. Elijah Moore is... Uh, they, he's been replaced. He's been replaced uh, in the offense by Denzel Mims. We had a report uh, from Jeremy Fowler on ESPN saying the Jets are moving forward with Denzel Mims. He's now a part of the weekly game plan. Elijah Moore was the 34th pick in the draft. Denzel Mims, also a second rounder, the 59th pick in the draft. So Elijah Moore, just be patient. Your time will come in about two to three years. Yeah, yeah, well said, If Mike. he's on the Mims track. Um, Denzel Mims, not good enough to start. Elijah Moore, not involved enough to start. Corey Davis did not practice Wednesday. I doubt he plays. So that means Garrett Wilson should have a pretty darn good game. Michael Carter or James Robinson, I'm going Michael Carter with the pass-catching work if I had to choose one. Yep, until they show that James Robinson overtakes, which it could, it certainly could happen. It could also it uh, it could also not happen this season. I'm yes. not I'm not projecting that, but I don't think it's um, absurd to think that Michael Carter is just the starter, and they brought in James Robinson to back up Michael Carter. On the other side, Stephon Diggs is in your lineup. Gabe Davis still had seven targets. He's in your lineup. Yep. Khalil Shakir had no fantasy points last week. He played 29 percent of snaps. Isaiah McKenzie was up over 50 percent, and so you don't start those peripheral guys because you just don't know which one it's going to be. And Dawson Knox. Got into the end zone again. 
that takes away a little bit of the, um, you know, he's gotten into the end zone two weeks in a row. They're going to look to him down there versus these other guys. Yeah, so, the the real question here is going to be at the running back position. Eyes are going to be on Devin Singletary and Naeem Hines, and unfortunately you don't know how much you can learn this week because it's a short week for Naeem Hines getting involved into the system. Um, because of that, I think if you need to start Devin Singletary, you can. I would not be surprised if this game actually hit the under. I mean, you know, you talked about the Jets' defense, ninth against quarterbacks, eighth against wide receivers. They are at home. Mm -hmm. I would not make such a proclamation on the road, but I think it, it could be a little closer than that, that line even shows. If the Bills don't get to 30 points, which I do think the Jets can hold them under 30, even if, you know, even if they're playing against a great Bills offense, then that this line probably doesn't doesn't go over mike are you chasing tyler conklin's performance last week uh, honk, honk. <laughs> uh i mean there's a world where you could have to stream it but generally speaking i don't want to okay uh like, i him versus dawson knox is a very interesting question because knox was there for fantasy the last two weeks because of the touchdown but his stat line was two for ten yeah <laughs> yeah but in the bills are the number one team against opposing tight yeah. ends so just saying like chasing the volume of probably Conklin. just going to pick Allen in that situation. <laughs> yeah. I'd, what about Evan Ingram or Tyler Conklin? Oh, Evan Ingram. Ingram. By a lot. Yeah. Why by a lot? Uh, he's, he's been really involved in the offense. And lately. they're playing the Raiders, if I'm not mistaken. I uh, Yeah. Conklin, he's been involved again. I mean, he's got 16 targets over the last two weeks and 10 catches. It, it comes down to what is the game script? Do they open it up again like they did last week or do they try and turtle? Okay. All right. Um, we'll see. Yep. He he is. I think part of his involvement is the same thing with Garrett Wilson. It's like we can't run yeah, the ball. Yeah, for can't sure. run the ball. So Tyler Conklin is a big, juicy target that you can uh, pretend to run the ball with. Sure. All the rankings, the start sit tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers dot com. It's time for our starts. Starts of the week. I'm going with Aaron Rodgers against Detroit. Nice. I like, I like it. See? They we're, have, we're in. It's it's get right time for Aaron Rodgers. Might get Lazard back. We'll already have Aaron Jones in the passing game. The Lions defense is allowing the most points per game, the most total yards per game, the most net yards per pass attempt. Attempt. Uh, it's delicious. It's like playing a practice squad team. Yeah. No, I, I, I think this is a perfect get right situation in division. He knows that team very well. Uh, at quarterback, I'm going with Tua. Uh, yeah. at Chicago fancy points per game too has been very very good uh, you know you got to factor in those injuries he had early in the year and when he left if you're looking at season long rankings otherwise he's the quarterback seven right behind Kyler Murray the last two weeks the quarterback 11 the quarterback one he's heating up and I think he's about to be on fire uh, Mike McDaniel's letting him force feed the two fastest men on the planet and since week four, Chicago is the 24th in schedule-adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Last, last week, it was Dak and the Cowboys shredding them. I think Miami's going to score a ton of points. That is a team that shows up red against quarterbacks right now, Chicago. Right. They show up as a better top 15 defense in platforms. But what you just said, since week four, 24th in schedule-adjusted, important to know because that could make you make a wrong decision right. about and, a Justin Herbert versus Tua. And now minus Roquan. And my my quarterback star of the week, what have oh, I told you? Oh, of course it is. It's the quarterback two over the last month, which is a little disingenuous to stat because some guys didn't play four games yet. But you talk about Al Borland's new starting quarterback? It is factual that over the last month, Justin Fields is the quarterback two over the last two weeks, top five, and that was against the Patriots and Dallas. Like, that is – a sensational turnaround sensational. for the for the second year quarterback. He's got the rushing baseline, nearly ten attempts a game, over fifty yards a game on the ground. Miami tied with the Lions for allowing the highest completion percentage, and I, I got him as a top ten play this week. And if you pick him up to stream from uh, the stream of the week, you're looking pretty nice over the next couple of weeks. All right, let's try this again. I'm going Raheem Mostert at running back for my start <laughs> of the week, taking on those Chicago Bears. Um, Mostert last week, it wasn't like he was bad. He just didn't get targeted in the passing game and didn't get into the end zone. And that did not give you a big enough fantasy week for what you wanted in that matchup against Detroit. Just didn't go his direction. Um, Mostert, I think he belongs in your lineup 
because the Chicago Bears are allowing the second most rushing yards per game. He, you know, Jeff Wilson will arrive. He will not usurp Raheem Mostert. And I'm going with a uh, running back start of the week that I don't want to go with because he's in tonight's game against me, Miles Sanders. Yeah, that's not a good place to be. Uh, Miles Sanders has a great matchup against an awful run D, if you can even call them a run defense. He's had over 70 yards the last couple games. The game script looks perfect for him, and I really, really hope uh, that he has a bad game and makes this look like a dumb start of the week. <laughs> <laughs> but usually in our league of record this year, my opponents have gone hog wild with their scoring. So that's another point in his favor. So you really hope all the, the Foot Clan listens to you and then they fail? Is no, that what I'm, you said? I am telling them I think that's what you said. that uh, if you want to have a lot of fantasy points, start Miles Sanders because he's playing against me. Okay. All right. Aaron Jones, I, I heard it. I, heard I want say, them. I hope that he fails. And I that you want look them to take joy in my inevitable sadness. That, it makes it makes sense. Aaron Jones against Detroit over the last two weeks. We're getting back on track here. Running back four, 18 opportunities. Running back 11, 25 opportunities. The Lions 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the running back position. Last year you had the Aaron Jones game. Four touchdowns against these Detroit Lions. It looks like the ship is being... Uh, brought up right here for Aaron Jones, and I think we can reliably play him at least for this week. He is one of the few players in the game where every time you watch him play football, you know he's different than the other players around him. We used to talk about Dalvin Cook that way. Aaron Jones is is ridiculously good. Terry McLaurin is going to be my wide receiver oh, start baby. of the week. Oh, baby. Yeah, I love it. Believe it or not, the Commanders have won three in a row. And the I don't believe it. And the connection between McLaurin and Heineke it's legitimate. 26% target share. Jahan Dotson's not practicing. Curtis Samuel is not a he's not a traditional wide receiver. He's more of a gadgety guy that, you know, you could use him down the field. You can use him behind the line of scrimmage. Um, Minnesota secondary, very vulnerable. 28th against fantasy wide receivers. Second, uh, second highest yards per attempt allowed. And Terry McLaurin is just too good. I mean, he's a really, really good player. And if you're going to give him a shot, which is what Heineke is willing to do, you're going to have enough success regardless of what the Manders do. I'm going TMC. I hope Carson Wentz is watching. <laughs> Just well, to force feed. Yeah, like look what happens when you give your top played elite wide receiver a bunch of targets. You win football games. I'll bet there's more to it than just that for winning, but I do hope he comes back and targets Terry McLaurin the same. I'm going with Or he doesn't come back. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I mean, look. They're winning, right? Um, I'm I think gonna... Heineke has started 18 games or something now in the last few years. Yeah, he always gets in. And they don't usually win those games. <laughs> Joshua Palmer is my wide receiver start okay, of the week. let's go. Uh, hopefully you stashed him before the buyer. You picked him up on waivers this week. He seems like a very good start. This is a guy who saw 12 targets in week six. And since week two, he's been seeing seven targets a game. Now Mike Williams is out. Keenan Allen looks to be on target for 2023. Uh, he's going to have a great return next year. Uh, but he's probably going to be out this week. And the Falcons rank dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to wide receivers and project to be without their best cornerback. So Josh Palmer should be able to get it done in Atlanta. And my wide receiver start, it's Christian Kirk. It's been a wild year here for Christian. It started on fire. It felt like you had the steal of the draft. Then the Jaguars just as a team kind of fell apart, but he still leads the team in targets per route run receptions. Uh, and like the matchup says everything, right? It's the Raiders, 28th versus fantasy wide receivers. If you adjust for the schedule and looking back at where Christian Kirk has kind of failed, you get it. Like the Denver Broncos, the Colts who, like we had said, they, at the beginning of the year, they was rough, but they've sort of turned it around. Uh, the Houston Texans, I can't really explain that one, but the Philadelphia Eagles, a bad game for Christian Kirk. So it, it, when you look at the box score and the opponent, things are starting to make sense. Why these? Why certain games weren't so strong, but he should have a good one against the Vegas Raiders. All right, to finish it up, tight end. I'm going with Zach Ertz against Seattle because Seattle is the worst against the <laughs> tight end position. Yeah. Even if you look at recently, you look at schedule adjusted, they're the worst. Kyler looks for Zach Ertz in the red zone. Outside of DeAndre Hopkins, Ertz is the most trusted target in the offense. And with Hollywood not there, Ertz has not had to go into retirement as a focal point. 
I think it's just going to be another great game at home for Zach Ertz. Uh, I'm going to take my tight end start of the week, uh, catching passes from your quarterback start of the week. I'm going with Robert Tunyon in Detroit. Uh, Bobby T should have a good week. He's been Bobby. pegged as someone that has been a touchdown or bust guy, but the receptions are actually flowing. He has the fifth most tight end receptions despite being eased in at the beginning of the year. He has a 21% target share over the last three weeks, but only one touchdown on the year. That is obviously what he, where he makes his bread and butter, and this is a matchup where if you say, well, Aaron Rodgers should finally throw three touchdowns, it's going to be in this game. If he throws three, Bobby T's getting one, uh, and you know how bad the Lions' defense is. They're allowing the most points per game, the most total yards. They rank 30th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to tight end, so – they're bad, and they're bad at this position. Going with Gerald Everett against the Atlanta Falcons. Mike Williams is out. Keenan Allen likely to be out. And Everett, he's, he's been pretty constant, pretty consistent for this team. He ranks fourth among tight ends and red zone targets, fifth in slot snaps, which is those are oh so delightful. The snap percentage has kind of gone down the last couple of weeks. But even still, when, when he went down last week to you know 56% of the snaps, he still saw nine targets. I think there is a chance that those snaps have to go up this weekend uh, against the Atlanta Falcons, who are allowing the fourth most points per game and the most passing yards per game. I'm putting Everett in. I'm really surprised none of you guys went with my new tight end, Travis Kelsey, as your start of the week. Mm. That's a little – I'm a little discouraged about that. You guys don't you, think you, he's going to have a good game? No. He'll I, have a great game. I hope he does. I hope he has a great game. I think he will. <laughs> go get him, champ. <laughs> Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Ripped and shredded. I soon was headed to an evil lair to put out some fires. A mysterious villain was there chilling, holding hostage the Seahawks' Jason Myers. <laughs> I am very confused. See, I was going to say that's the first time I've been able to track it all year. Yeah, well, Mike's a dumber. There's a villain? He's No, no. I, I'm tracking the story. Okay, okay, okay. But you are saying there is a villain. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's and mysterious. He, and Jason Myers is being held hostage. That is correct. How is someone supposed to be the boom, boom kicker of the week while they are a captive? What do you think my ripped and shredded body is about to do here, Mike? I'm about to set Jason Myers free to score more than one and a half field goals this week. Oh, have you guys uh, you guys pivoted your, your kicker Evan over McPh under? Evan McPherson is dead to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but Jason Myers is my new hero. He went from a lock to not a lock real quick. Yeah, well, he let me down big time. And so, you know, this is a selfish game we play. Go Jason Myers. Well, I've got good news for you, Jason. This oh, episode of the show is concluding, which means the next episode is the one in which you will spin the Wheel of Shame. The rest of the matchups tomorrow, the Wheel of Shame, Fantasy Face-Off. It's also the episode that I will come in here either really happy or really tilted. Uh, Foot Clan, if you want to root alongside me, my matchup tonight is insane. I have... Jalen Hurts, I have uh, Devonta Smith and the Eagles defense, and I am facing Miles Sanders, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard, and Damian Pierce. Like half of our players are Goodness in tonight's gracious. game. I feel like you need a boo button and a cheer yes. button, and you just go back and forth hitting and, those. And it will be on every single play. All right, that is it for today's episode, Foot Clan. Definitely check out jointhefoot.com. Become a supporter of our independent podcast. We'll catch you tomorrow. See you later, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.